So before we are time, we are timed out. Uh, we are discussing. Um, <clears throat> I, I explained to you some of the other concepts, uh, the concepts that of mutual exclusiveness, dependent events, and independent events. Now I'm gonna explain the rules that apply to those these concepts. Okay. So now um for mutual exclusive events and um Dependent event and independent event. There are, there are some rules we use for calculating probability that reflect this uh, concept. First one, this rule, the main rules are the addition rule and the multiplication rule. Okay. Now let's start with the addition rule. Um, addition rule. Now, uh, for addition rule, probably the, the key word there is all. Like you can see this word here. Oh, that's the keyword for that's how you know when you see oh, that's how you usually know that you will use addition rule. So the first one is this probability of R event A R B equals probability of event A plus probability of R event B. Minus probability of event A and B. So if this is a, a mutually exclusive event, at this part of the equation, we turn to zero. See, if it's mutually exclusive, we turn to zero. That will leave us with a, a probability of event A or B equals probability of event A plus probability of event B. So you can apply this rule even to three events, four events, you know, just extend the formula to get three events and four events. So now, for multiplication rule, uh, multiplication rule, multiplication rule, or independent event. event. It's a probability of, in this case, and is the keyword. Probability of A and B equals probability of A times probability of B. There are three of them. For example, if I have three events, probability of A and B and C B, and probability of event A will occur times probability of event B times probability of event C. So I keep going, you know, as many events as you want to have there, if there are independent events. Now we have multiplication rules for dependent events. In this case, sir, we have it in this form. Which of that if A and B we occur, uh, A and B we occur, we be probably that event A, uh, have occurred times the probability that even B will occur, given that even A have already occurred. See, this slash, this forward slash here means given that. See, this forward slash, it means uh, given that. What it means. So that means, this means that probability of even a B will occur given that A have already occurred. And there are three of them. Uh, probability of event A and B and C will be probably that event A have occurred times the probability that event B will occur given that even A have already occurred times 
Where does even A or even term C will occur? In that event A and B have already occurred. So uh, when we apply this, uh, you see that uh, the, the problem might look like a monster, but you know it's, it's really simple. As we can see from this example here, it says at a political rally, um, let me move it down so we can have enough. At the political rally, there are 20 Republicans, 13 Democrats, and six independents. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. At the political rally, there are 20 Democrats, 13 Demo sorry, 20 Republicans, 13 Democrats, and six independents. If a person is selected at random, find the probability that he or she is either a Democrat or an independent. So this is the or that tells you that they're gonna be either a Democrat or you know independent. So that I mean, sorry, that tells you that you're gonna use addition rule for this. So the addition rule says uh, solution. This is what the rule says for addition rule. This is that you have uh, Republicans. So Republicans, let's use R for Republicans. D for Democrats. I for I for independence. On the addition rule, um, we have probability of uh, it, it asks not for for democrat or independent. So probability of democrats or independent. We, we come to that the equals probability of democrats. Plus uh, the point of independence, minus point of democrats and independence. But let us find the sample space first. We have um, Republicans. Are, we have Republicans are twenty Republicans. Democrats have 13 Democrats. Independents have six independents. So that total, total will now become some. Um, huh? 39. 39. Add them all, total will equal 39. 39. So that probability of uh, Democrats or independent will be equals uh, that of Democrat and independent and minus Democrat and independent. So we have the equals for Republicans, we have so for Democrat, we have 13. 13 out of 39. Yeah. For independents, we have uh, six out of 39. And also for, for Democrats and independent, for ind Democrat and independent, there's none. It can be Democrat and independent. So that's going to give us zero out of 39. That will give us the answer right there. So we have um, a calculator. And um, okay, that's number that's nine. Okay, uh, plus okay, six over that's nine. Uh, six over that's nine. And that gives us the answer 0.487. Because 0 over that 9 is 0. If you want to add, you can, you can add it. Actually, minus 
uh, zero by thirty nine will give you zero. If you like, to, you can put it in if you like. Thirty nine will give you zero. So we still have here. Uh, 0.487. Okay. That answer the question. We are done with that part. Any question on this? Yes, Professor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the zero over 39. Where is it from? Uh, it can you see my this part? Yeah. Democrat and independent. Can, can you be a Democrat and independent at the same time? No. That's the that is zero. That's nice. Okay. Is there a question? No, I was about asking the same question. Sir. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example. It says here, a card is drawn from a deck and then replaced. Then the second card is drawn. Find the probability of getting a queen and then an ace. Okay. So let me um, bring this uh, here so you can see uh, what we have. Okay. I'm going to copy this. So we're looking at it twice. So I mean, this kind of question, you like to look at the sample, total sample space. So that will help you to answer the question properly. So for the card, have it here. Say a card is drawn from my deck and it's replaced. So we have 52 cards. If you remove the card and put it back, we still have 52 cards. So then the, the second card is drawn. Find the probability of getting a queen and then an ace. And means that you're going to use a multiplication rule. But if, you, if you look at the multiplication rule here, you can say and. And this is for independent because the card was replaced. So, it's, so that means um, that the probability of uh, Getting, uh, let me move it down so we have, have enough room. Yeah, of a pain and then an ace. Yeah, probability of pain, pain, and ace. Maybe probability of pain times probability of. Ace. That's what it says, a queen and an ace. So how many queens do we have? We have four queens, one, two, three, four, which is four, four over, out of the, the whole card here is 52 of them, 52 times uh, ace. I have four aces as well. Now, the card is replaced, so we still have four aces. Four, That will give you the answer right away. So I'm going to put the QDL 4 by 32. Um, and then 4 over 32. Okay. Uh, times 4 over 52. Point zero zero five nine. I call it 0 0.006, depending on what you have, 0 0.006, uh, 0 0.006. Okay, like you call it 0 0.006. Any question on this one? Any question? I'm sure there won't be. Good. I look at uh, this one here. So it says here, a person owns a collection of parties. Excuse me, Professor. Mm -hmm. This can you a little bit long? The question. This one. Yes. Yes. Hold on, please. Can you uh, mute yourself? Uh, <laughs> background is nice. You have it now, right? You have it now, I believe. Yes. Thank you, sir. Let's look at this one. A person owns a collection of 30 CDs, of which five are country music. If two CDs are selected at random, Find the probability that um, both are country music. Now, um, now you say it didn't tell us where, where they replace the CD before they make the next selection. It didn't say that, so we assume that it's that they are not replaced. Which means we're going to use multiplication rule for dependent events this time. 
Okay. Now, uh, we have how many CDs that he has? He has uh, 30 CDs, if, uh, of which five are country music. So, uh, now, let's see B, country music. There are 30 CDs. So he chose um, two CDs without replacement. So the probability, we say find the, we say find the um, probability that the both CDs are country. That means that the first one is a country music and the second one is a country music. That's what, it, what, that's what it's asking you here. To find the probability, probability that the first CD is a country music and the second CD is a country music. So probability that, uh, C1 is a country music, and C2, as the second CD, is also a country music. Uh, you can get that by applying the rule. Remember, we assumed that he didn't replace it because they didn't tell us if he replaced it. It means probability that at the first CD, C1 is a country music, times the probability that the second one, C2, is a country music, given that C1 is already a, comp a country music. Okay. All right. So now let's apply this, which means before the selection, there are five country music out of 30 CDs. So we have five, they made it five out of 30, they made the selection. Now, they did, not, they did not replace it, but he didn't replace it. So how many country music are left now? Four. Four out of 29. Exactly. Four out of 29. That would give us the answer we are looking for. So we go to this place. And let, uh, so I have five. But 30, okay, okay, times uh, four over 29. And that will give us what you're looking for here. 0 0.0229, zero 0 0.023, 0 0.023, good enough. Uh, 0 0.023. Sorry, excuse me, where did you get the four from? Because he, when he selected the first one, he didn't replace it. So there, now we have four country music left. There are five country music, right? Yeah. My music. He selected it and then he didn't put it back. So they have four country music left out of two, two to nine now. Yeah. Okay. No. Now, um, any other question before? Look, let's look at this one. Harry's pool. Sometimes they give you the probability in form of percentage. Said a Harris pool found that forty six percent of Americans say that they suffer great stress at least once a week. If three people are selected at random, find the probability that all three we say they suffer from great stress. Okay, solution. Okay, let us use S means uh, suffer great stress. You say three people were selected. So find the probability that the first person say that they suffer great stress and the second person also suffer great stress. And the third person, that's what it means. So you, say, you say find the probability that, that, that they suffer great stress at least, that, that all of them, all three, we say the spark rest for each week. So we're looking for the uh, probability of S1, first person suffer great stress, and S2, second person suffer great stress, and S3, third person. This will give us probability of S1, okay, probability of S2, okay, times probability of S3. Yeah, so I throw down some aggressive stress. Yeah.
second person, and the first person's address press. Okay, so that we have it at now. Stress, great stress, he said that 46% of them are Americans. So, so great, uh, it is 46%, uh, which is uh, 0.46 if you change it to decimal. So let me plug it in here. So we have to be 0 0.46 times 0 0.46, okay, times 0 0.46. So usually I put this as 0.46 raised to the power three. If you remember your algebra. So you have 0 0.46, 0 0.46 times 0.46 times 0 0.46, well, three of them, 0 0.097, Zero point two ninety seven. Question Excellent. Now, sometimes they might ask the question in a different format. The rules stay the same. As I as I'm going to illustrate with this example, it says the result of nine eighty five pedestrian deaths. That were caused by accidents are presented below. Find these probabilities. Um, okay. Now, that if one um, pedestrian death is randomly selected, find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or a driver was intoxicated. But this is if two pedestrian deaths are randomly selected with, with replacement. Yeah. What is the probability that, they, that both, in both cases, both driver and the pedestrian was intoxicated? First thing to, whenever they appear in form of a table like this, uh, the first thing you want to do is to get the totals. Okay? Uh, to get the totals. Okay. So I'm going to get the totals now and before we can begin answering this question. A total here, and then we're gonna have total here. So let me I'm gonna put this. I'm just gonna add them to get this total. So I think I have totals um, in my book, so I can just put the totals. Okay. Now, uh, total. So I added them already. So I, let me, I'm just typing the total so you can see them. Total should be, um, nine, I got uh, 138. I got um, 847. This if you add these two, you get this. If you add these two, you get that one. If you add these two together, you're gonna get this, I got, 325, add this to, you're gonna get 616. If you add this to here, total here, you get uh, 985. And if you add this to here, you get uh, 985. So you get a total. Once you get a total, you are ready to answer the question. If the first question says, part A, It says, okay. So what if one pedestrian that is is randomly selected, find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was intoxicated. So that this all tells you that you are gonna be additional rule. Well, first of all, let us um write the, let, let, let's let us use P to represent pedestrian intoxicated and D is a uh, P complement P PC pedestrian is not intoxicated not intoxicated 
D is for driver intoxicated and D complement DC as you as have here. Okay, D complement equals driver not intoxicated. With this, we can be able to answer those questions. So this is gonna be D complements, okay. Right, so now we are ready. So I'm, I'm gonna move this down so we can have more room. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It says. If one pedestrian death is randomly selected, find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was intoxicated. So, so put them, I mean, um, the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was intoxicated. So, probability of pedestrian was intoxicated or driver was intoxicated. So, we add use additional rule because probability of pedestrian intoxicated. Plus probability of driver intoxicated and also probability of both the pedestrian and the driver was intoxicated. So we can get these numbers from the table. Pedestrian intoxicated, see pedestrian intoxicated, you say yes, you can see right here. And the total is right, total for that is like 325 out of 985 deaths. Three to five out of nine eighty five plus driver intoxicated PD. You can see driver intoxicated CNC, yes, right there. So price is one thirty eight out of nine eighty five. Out of nine eighty five. Then minus pedestrian intoxicated and driver intoxicated. See. Pedestrian intoxicated, you can see yes. Driver intoxicated, you can see yes. So you can see that they intersect at this point. This, this, this point presents yes, yes, for, do, for both pedestrian and driver. So it's 59. Yeah, 59 out of 985. So we got this from the calculator. I'm gonna write this down. Uh, pedestrian intoxicated is 325 over 985. Driver intoxicated is 138 over 985. Minus 59 over 985. So let's put this in the calculator and we will get our results. So we clear this. Have three twenty five to go to nine eighty five plus one thirty eight to go to nine eighty five minus uh, fifty nine for nine eighty five. It was 0 0.410. 0 0.410. 0 0.410. Any question? Any question? Um, so can you go up a little bit for me? Up. Here. A little. I mean here. Uh -huh. You mean to here? The question, to the question. That's the question right here. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to copy something. Yeah, take a photo of it. That's, that's the question right there. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Now, this, the second question says if two pedestrian deaths, now we have 10 minutes left. If two pedestrian deaths are randomly selected with replacement, what is the probability that in both cases, both the driver, and the pedestrian. So you see the and is the key. Both the driver and the pedestrian, we are not intoxicated. I have a quick question. 
Yes, ma'am. Since you said there's 10 minutes left and I wanted to talk to you after class about the whole Excel thing, is there a possibility that you could restart the meeting so I can ask my question? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, sure. Let's, let's finish this and then maybe, maybe we might still have uh, time. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what is the problem that in both cases, both driver and pedestrian were not intoxicated? Not intoxicated. You can see pedestrian not intoxicated and driver were and, and that means the multiplication rule. Okay. So both the pedestrian and the driver were not intoxicated. Okay. All right, let's do and. So uh, what is it? Uh, part B. But the pedestrian and driver were not intoxicated. So now, probability of pedestrian not intoxicated and driver not intoxicated will be uh, now is give us some um, two of them driver not intoxicated and pedestrian not so, so it's gonna be both the driver and the pedestrian are not intoxicated. And you, can, you can pick it from the table actually. See, both the driver <clears throat> and the pedestrian. See, you can see no for driver and no for pedestrian. You can see right here, right there. I can, I can see the driver is not intoxicated, is and the pedestrian is, is not. It's both of them you can see 581, but there are two of them. So 581 raised to the power of 2, okay? Because there are two of them. So you're going to be, uh, this represents both, say, for driver, no is here. For pedestrian, you can see no is. So you can see this place within no for both of them. And there are two of them. So it's going to be 180, 581, 581. Over 985 times <clears throat> 581 uh, 581 okay. both of them are not intoxicated. So well, it's done 581 985. So 581 over 985 squared. 581 over 985. Okay, times 581 over 0.348. I can see that there's 34.8% chance of both the driver and the pedestrian are not intoxicated. So that's the end of our, uh, and our, our session for today. Uh, to, tomorrow we will begin with conditional probability and finish up probabilities and there are the rest of everything then. So that I'm where on Thursday we begin um uh, quality distributions now um but the lady that want to ask a question about um yes okay, go ahead now so i was able to download excel on my computer mm -hmm. and can i share my screen so you can see just to make sure i'm doing this right okay, oh now mine it says you disable screen sharing huh? it says you have screen sharing disabled what's screen um so I can share my screen so you can see it. Let's see. You might not be able to figure it out in time. Um. Let's see. Okay, see um, how many, how much time we have. Okay, four. Yeah, see, try it, try it now. See what, try it, try it. Let me see. Oh yeah, it works now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so.
I can see it though. I'm about to share it now. So, okay. So this is my Excel I was able to download. I, I, I still can see, I still cannot see it. Oh, it says I'm sharing it. I'm just seeing anything. I'm, I'm just seeing my phone. Can you see, can you see yet? I'm looking at the screen, but I, I'm not seeing that. You have to go I, up top to view options and then click on her name so that uh, you can see. You say view option? Yeah, view options and then click on her name so that you can see her screen. Because I can see her screen. My name is Kirsten Brown. Yeah. I'm in class. Hello. I'm in class. Hello. Can you see it yet? No, no. Did you go to Kirsten? I'm, I'm looking for the view option, but I didn't see the view option. It's, it's at the top of the page. I don't know if yours look like ours, but it's at the top. And it say you are viewing Kirsten Brown's screen. And then next to it, it says view options up top of the screen. I can't view our screen too. I see that one too. You can see her own too. Go to view options and click her name. <clears throat> I don't have view options, but that's in my in my. You should. It will is at the top of the screen. Yeah, it's at the top of the screen next to the green box. Directly at the top. That's where the view in the remaining minute is showing. Oh, we have to log. Yeah, you, you you're gonna log back it right now. Uh, when we're timed out, you log back in so I can take your attendance. Okay. Okay. But, um, Kirsten, what was you asking though? Because that's that's Excel. Yeah, I was asking. So basically, when I go to save, I pretty much went to save as. I saved it and everything. And then like in my finder, I have it right here, but I wanted to know like when he opens it, will he be able to see like the work that I did? Because I don't know if it's gonna send it to him like just a regular spreadsheet and he can't click on the boxes. Yeah, once he once he saves it to his computer, I feel like he'll, he, he should be able to click on it and do that just like if he, you know, like just like when you download a document and you wanna uh -huh. add stuff to it, he should be able to save it to his computer and then he can click on it and see it. So when y'all saved it, what did y'all save? Actually, actually, I don't need to save it really. If if you if you save it and upload it where the assignment is, well, all I need to do is to open it and click at and click at your answers, and I will see what you did. So so I just don't. Want, I just want to make sure when you click on the box, you can see it. Like, do I save it as? I just saved it as, uh, two thousand and four, the two thousand and four version. Yeah, that's so that's so still fine. So as long as you save it as a, a, a Excel file, I will can I can open it and see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, when we when I upload it, if there's an issue, can you just let me know? Of course, well, I, of course I will let you know when I grade it. Yeah. Okay, because I don't want to get a bad grade because you can't look at my work. I, I don't think I don't think if you save it as a as, as an Excel file and upload it, and I wouldn't see it. So long as you do the work on it and save it as a as Excel file, not not as a PDF file. Right, exactly. Okay, well, I saved it as an Excel file, so I think I'm fine. So I'm gonna take back my the listen. One participant can she okay? So please uh, log back in when the once uh, once uh, I'm gonna end it now, and then we'll log back in for your attendance, okay? Okay. <laughs>